Hello, beloved. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me on the Prophetic Vessel Show. This will be your message from God, Ra, Allah, Source, the Divine. I'm grateful for your time, all right? If you are keen on becoming a Patreon member, on my Patreon, I offer weekly sign readings, okay? Weekly sign readings for $10 per month based on love, spiritual path, as well as career and finances. I also offer personal readings. For $50 per month, you get a personal reading from me every month based on love, spiritual path, as well as career and finances. The link is listed down in my description box below if you want to tap in and join my Patreon, or you can type what is on the screen via Google, search it, and it'll also lead you to my website uh, to sign up to my Patreon. Thank you to, the, to those who have already and those who are going to. Let us tap in and find out why were you spiritually led here? What is here for you, beloved? Why did you resonate with the title? And why did your own YouTube algorithm present you with this message? Let us tap in and talk to God, okay? We got the Ten of Pentacles reversed to the death, all right? We got Virgo, Pisces energy as well as Scorpio energy. With this Ten of Pentacles reversed here, I feel like somebody is um, ill. All right, somebody's health is declining. Okay, and I feel like it's getting worse and worse. It's like somebody keeps being sick here. It's like as time goes, this person they 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 stay in the sunken energy of being um, tackled by some form of an illness here. It's like this illness is something deadly with the death energy showing up. It's something that can compromise this person's health, all right, to the maximum. It's not easy to find a remedy for whatever this is, like the cure. I feel like something here is like a chronic illness, something that is lifelong someone is struggling with a lifelong lifetime illness here something that is chronic something that is, is is there to stay no matter how much time goes instead the 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 only thing time is going to do is worsen this 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 circumstance this illness because i feel like as this person is sick they're not trying to figure out a cure or remedy or anything like that, medications, you know, things of that matter. They're trying to, like somebody is, is trying to give themselves over to the sickness so that they die. Because they don't want to face something here. They're just trying to give themselves over.
We got the chariot. We have cancer energy with the chariot. This person is struggling to, like day by day, like they just get weaker here. They're struggling to function in their normal um, way of being because this illness here is sort of controlling their life at this point and they're allowing it. All right, and the reason, the only reason they're allowing it is because this illness they feel like is a gateway to freedom. Because to live would be to suffer some form of a consequence. To live would be to go through some form of negative karma that they're not in the um, capacity, spiritual strength to deal with. They don't have it in them to deal with this karma. They don't have the strength and the spiritual stamina to bear the consequence. So this person is trying to choose death, right? That's why they're not trying to figure out a way to make themselves better or to cope with this illness. They, they, they are trying to worsen it. So the narratives are as follows. We have two narratives, all right? So God is saying that it could be a physical illness that is enabling this person's physical health to, to decline, or it could be a mental illness that is enabling this person's mental health to decline. So take it how it resonates for your reality and how you resonate with this message here. We got the four of pentacles here. It's like this person is flirting with death. All right, they're flirting with the spirit of death. It's like this is somebody who, as much as they're trying to give themselves over to this chronic illness here, something that is going to require an illness that requires lifetime, lifelong treatment. All right. As much as they want to give themselves over to this illness, and that is what they're currently doing, that is the present energy of this person it's like this illness here it, it's not going to go away but as much as it's detrimental to them that it, and it can cause some form of a death i feel like this death that can occur is not something that can occur abruptly or immediately it's something that can occur over years so as much as they're trying to run away from some form of consequence here because they, they don't have the strength or the spiritual stamina to suffer for the consequences of their actions as much as this is what they're trying to do just um flirt with death so that they don't have to face their karma it's not going to work out in their favor or the way that they think it will because this illness here is going to kill them slowly this is like a slow death We have Capricorn energy here, and we have Libra energy. So, so what I'm seeing, we have the Two of Swords to the Eight of Cups. This person is trying to not face something here. They're trying to deliberately skip the, the part of life or their phase of life where they have to suffer for their consequences. Because I feel like this is somebody that is evil and wicked in their ways. They're set in their ways. And now that it's caught up to them, they're running away from what they've done. Like somebody is running here. Imagine being so sick that you know you need some form of medical attention or something to cater to what you are dealing with. Whether it's spiritual medical attention or... You know what I'm saying? It's the um, 
the clinical medical attention, but this is somebody that's not willing to tap into both of those um, elements of life because they fear that it might decrease their possibility of death because they're viewing themselves in a very critical condition because of how they feel right now due to this illness. But just because they view themselves to be in a critical condition, it doesn't mean that it's going to bring death soon. God is saying that will be too easy for this person because of all the things they've got up to on this earth. We have Gemini energy, we have the Three of Swords here, we have Aries energy with the Two of Wands. We have the Hermit reverse to the Queen of Pentacles here. So this person, like earlier, right, um, God instructed me, he does that sometimes, right? He instructs me to, you know, usually in the mornings, to come in and, and sit on my um my desk here, my altar, and speak to him. And, you know, he tends to draw me to the cards and illustrate certain energies to me, you know, um, and tells me a story somehow of what I might be dealing with personally or what you guys collectively might need to know, right? And it's like, he does this beforehand. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's on days where I'm not working at all. And sometimes, you know, when I do get instructed to, 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 to pull on energy, it's not just for me. And it's not just sometimes. Most of the time, it's not for me. It's for me to know so that later when I do tap in collectively, I have it in my vision, right? I have it in mind. So he can bring it forth when I need it. So that's what's happening right now. God is showing me a vision that has to do with the energy I pulled on earlier this morning. It's like the energy was like based on this two of wands that I just pulled, you know, it, it came from this two of wands. It's like two of, two of wands is, you know, decision making, you know, when you make decisions, when you make plans, when you strategize, when you implement moves in your world and reality. And the two of wands energy is the energy of, you know, self, actualization you actually doing something that you've already thought of so God said to me that isn't it crazy that every decision that you make in life can either make your life or break your life and when it makes your life it makes you and you elevate whether spiritually physically emotionally mentally you know or when it breaks your life, the decision you might make, it, it results in, in situations like these where I feel like someone here coming back to the generalization of this message, somebody made the wrong decision and it altered their whole entire life. It's like this decision has affected this person like lifelong, lifetime type of energy here. It's nothing that they can just undo. It's nothing that they can just say, you know what, okay, I regret doing this, I made a mistake, or anything like that. This is some deep, 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 deep sort of energy of wrongdoing that this person is like, they, they stuck in that soil. And to uproot themselves from the soil will cause some form of a death, which is what is happening. That somebody planted a certain decision on earth 
and they want to uproot themselves from the decision and that's going to bring death to what they've planted but they've planted it with themselves in it so it's that's why it's bringing death to them this person did something here that they are in shambles because of that like what they've done that's why they're trying to run away from it that's why they're not trying to face it they're trying to give themselves over to the spirit of death flirting with death because that's easier than facing this pain to to to, to look at the, the consequence and the spirit of consequence here based on the karma that is due because they know what they've put out there they know what they've done on earth someone may to say it's a wrong decision is an understatement here. It's like it's different when we as people, we make mistakes, we learn from our mistakes and we evolve with them. It's lessons, right? We learn. Mistakes are lessons. Losses are lessons. We learn and we evolve. And it's like what I'm channeling from this person's energy, what I'm seeing is like they had an opportunity to learn, all right? They had the opportunity to do better for themselves and choose to make better decisions. Decisions based on better values. Decisions based on better morals, traditions, ethics. But they chose to, to, to abandon the good and the light. And to, they chose some form of darkness to deal with the devil in. And now they've been consumed by that darkness because it's literally the resultant of the death. Their own death. They slow death. Something they can chase away. So whatever this person has done, that has placed them in this position here. They don't know how they're going to get out of it and they don't want to face it. So in order for them to not face it, they would much rather, you know, cheat karma and dodge the bullet of the consequences that are due and say, you know what, I'd rather die. That's how bad this decision was that put this person in this position. That's how bad this, this whole thing is. Somebody would rather die than to face something they've done here. They don't want to be healed or find some form of healing because they will still need to face what they've done, even if they get healing from this illness here. It doesn't change the fact that they did what they did, and it has to now be faced. Mm. This person is so miserable right now. We have the Five of Cups. As much as this is all happening, of course they're not going to be all happy chappy with it. It's like somebody's life is on hold, like a halt. Like... An abrupt stop. They're so deep in this darkness that it's hard for them to reconnect with themselves in a positive way or in a light, good way. All they see is darkness because they know what they've done, y'all. That's why it's important to reevaluate your actions of life. Like from the day you had your own consciousness, developing your own thoughts feelings not being told by parents or guardians about how to move with life when you decide to do things yourself that's your self-actualization process where you plant deeds on earth that grow because it's, it's you actually planting seeds right if you plant the seed of wanting to have a business that helps people and it's something that you're constantly doing trying to pursue, you are constantly watering it and nurturing it because you're constantly trying to achieve it. And same goes for somebody trying to do something bad, somebody trying to destroy someone's life, somebody trying to cause some form of demise upon another individual's reality. 
It's them planting that seed. And what happens when it backfires? Because you've done something to someone, or you try to do something to someone. If we if we look at it like, who would want, would you like to have somebody come and attack you? Either spiritually or physically. You know what I'm saying? Verbally. Emotionally. Like, would you would you want to experience that? That just comes to show that there's certain boundaries of life due to universal law that cannot be crossed. Because when you cross it, you, you put yourself in a portal. This person crossed over something here. It's like they did something that was so terrible, tragic, and just evil, man. Something was wicked here, is wicked. And it's like them trying to run away from it and not address it and not face it. They're scared of what they've done. And it's scary because there's only one way out of this. Death. There's only one way out of all of this. Death. And that's why we're going to be mad at what we do. How we plant our energy on earth. Because when it harvests, and if it, it starts to reap what you sow, you better make sure you are ready for that fruit that you bought with what you decided to want to do. You plan that, right? You strategize that, right? This person here, they chose wrong, man. They chose wrong. And not by mistake. That's what makes this person so, so sunken in all of this mess. Because they deliberately did something. The lovers. So the lovers is the energy of decisions. All types of decisions. Any decision you make. This is the it's the lovers energy and it's it's on the death, right? I was called to place it on the death. And then we have the two of wands here, which is the energy of decision making. So let's say you have a you have a choice. The lovers is more like let's say that a choice. So the choice comes with the decision that needs to be made, right? When you make the decision, it's the two of wands. But when you have a decision to make, that's the lovers. So the lovers is, 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 is when you are in the situation where you've been given a decision, a choice. And then to make it, you would be in the two of wands energy, right? But yeah, coming back here, it's like, because of that, it's like, the fact that somebody was given a choice, right? So, you know we all have the shadow. We all have a shadow, literally. You know, it's like the devil and the angel within all of us. The demon and the... The halo, so to speak, right? We all have that. And in life, we make the decision every day to step into a certain energy. You ever realize like an analogy, a reference point, a case study, an example, you ever take note of how different everyone is? The only similarity to everyone on earth is that we are human beings. But we are all different. Our thoughts, our heart space, you know what I'm saying? Our vibration, you know what I'm saying? Our frequency, we're all different. And we choose what we align ourselves with, with every decision that we make. And decision, decision is something you come across. It's presented to you by your own life and your reality. And each time you take the initiative to make the wrong decision deliberately, you are purposely putting yourself in the devil's den. 
and implementing the, 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 the devil frequency in your reality. He spoke about the demon and the halo, right? We all have that choice. Are you gonna be a good person or are you gonna be a bad person? And as much as the only similarity of all humankind is that we are just all human beings and everything else about us is different, the similarity also exists where we have, we all have a choice with this. So as much as it'd be like, oh, you like feeling sorry for somebody who did something so wicked and evil, making the choice to do it, knowing what it would do to the other person, there's no feeling sorry for someone that did this. There's no remorse for someone that did this. There's straight karma because you don't do bad to people. You are playing God. And God is in control of this game of life, whether you acknowledge it to be that or not. Let's tap in further here. Energy. And of course, being a good person is not the easiest thing to do, right? That's why it's a choice. It's like a path we all take. That's why good people end up being the ones that are hurt the most. It comes with the territory of being good, the frequency of the halo. Turn for the two of swords here. So, this person here, as we've established, there's only one way out of this. Imagine doing something so terrible, this evil, this bad, that you want out. And as much as we can be scientific with it and claim the afterlife, that there is like, like yo, you first to reach it, you have to die here, right? Whatever the afterlife is, God knows, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather not, man, but it's like somebody is, is, is <sighs> wouldn't you rather create a life, manifest, that's what manifesting is, it's, you, it's the decisions you make. I didn't see this. We have the Hierophant here. This is the lessons energy, right? Hierophant is lessons. Any lesson you learn, it's the Hierophant energy. It's like we are presented with choices and that's how we manifest. Like, okay, I'm making the choice to get up and put in the work to something that's going to be good for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm making the choice to get up and put in the work to put somebody else down. It's like everybody manifests like that. You know what I'm saying? And when you manifest a world that is so dark for yourself that you don't even want to be in it. I don't even want to tap into what this person has been doing. And all in the name of destroying you, by the way. A good person. It's like, it's not, that's the thing also about life. You can be a good person and still attract bad people. It's basically like, being a good person, you, you attract bad people in general. It doesn't mean because you're good to someone, they have to be good to you. It's up to who they are. And that's why we have to pray over 
protection over our life that whoever enters our life, whoever we decide to bring in our life, it's God's plan for us. And if it's not, may it not be successful. If it's not, may that person ghost me. If it's not, may God put the spirit of rejection within me so that I no longer want to be with that person or in their energy. Because that's the thing too. We don't know who's who in the streets, man. I can smile and claim I'm the friendliest, I'm the nicest, but inside it might be the opposite. You know what I'm saying? The thing about life is the flesh is fooling us. The flesh is fooling us. Sorry for the eight of cups here. We've got the nine of cups. Page of swords, all right? So, remember we established here that when you start to make and manifest your own karma or karmic justice, the scales can tip either way. Good karma, good karmic justice or bad karma, bad karmic justice. And that's what based on every decision and choice that you've made. And it starts the first time you make a conscious decision, not being told, you know what I'm saying? It's you taking it up upon yourself to do it. That's you sending out that energy. And that's, that's how your life just starts to manifest itself. And sooner or later, if you do it long enough and you stay in that energy long enough, it'll come. And whether you, you are anticipating it for the good or for the bad, it'll come. Somebody here has been doing something for too long here. Being a bad person for too long, doing bad things to good people for too long, taking advantage and abusing the right energies of life for too long. And that's, that's basically playing God. Because in that situation, this person, if they, they, they plan their decision to take you down, now every way they've been doing it, I don't even want to know, man. But if it was successful, your life would have been hindered. Your life would have been obstructed. What would have happened to you, man? That's why we gotta thank God for the protection that is above our lives. If, even if we don't understand it, just thank God. There's things that we don't know. We don't know, we know tomorrow will come because that's what happens every day. We sleep and wake up the next day. You don't even have control of that. No one does. The sun rises. It, it, it sets. The moon. We, we don't know anything, man. And once we acknowledge that and stop thinking that we God, we will avoid circumstances like this of having to face your maker for real and be your own God, right? Because that's what this person is doing and has been doing. They play God so much. Now, they have to be their own God. They have to take themselves out. Because they manifested and played God too long. For too long. Be careful what you do. Remember you are not God. No matter how much money you have, who you think you are, what you think you're about, you are not the big, biggest G-O-D. You are not the Lord. I'm being called to end this message here, okay? This was your message from God, Ra, Allah, Source, the Divine. I'm grateful for your time. Stay prayed up in these dangerous times of envy and jealousy. If you are keen on becoming a member of my Patreon, on my Patreon, I offer weekly sign readings Weekly sign readings for $10 per month based on love, spiritual path, as well as career and finances. I also offer on my Patreon personal readings for $50 per 
per month you get a personal reading from me every month based on love, spiritual path, as well as career and finances. The link is in the... The link is down in my description box below if you want to tap in and join and become a member of my Patreon. Or you can type what is on the screen via Google. It will lead you to my Patreon website where you can also tap in and join, all right? Thank you to those who have already and those who are considering it, thinking about it, all right? I will see you again on the Prophetic Vessel Show. Goodbye.